Hello, we would like to welcome everyone to the University of New England Graduate Programs in Health Informatics webinar. My name is Jeff Nelson and I'm an enrollment counselor for the Health Informatics Programs. Uh, the main focus for taking part in this webinar is to learn more about the master's gradu and graduate certificate in health informatics, uh, but we will also be covering the following in the, uh, in the lot of time frame. Uh, so what, what is health informatics? how health informatics is a growing field, healthcare job postings, employment growth, career earning potential, how the program works, uh, application, the admissions process, course offerings, and tuition costs. Uh, others that are with me tonight are student support specialist Haley Kinsella, as well as our manager, our program manager, Megan Landry. Uh, something to note, this webinar will be recorded. You are accepting the fact that you will be part of a recorded process in which to be used for future students. Uh, we will start the Q&A session at the end of the webinar, but if you have some questions that come up, please use the chat function to type in, the, in your questions during the presentation. Or if you don't feel comfortable asking in this format, I encourage you to contact us at uh, our phone number here is 855-751-4445, uh, or you can write to us via email at informatics at une.edu. So something here about uh, UNE Online. Uh, we are ranked as one of the best universities in America by U.S. News and World Report, and um, we are an academic organizational affiliate of HIMSS. Uh, we are also an innovative and established leader in the online learning community, and we are extremely pleased to be offering a Master of Science in Health Informatics, as well as a grad certificate in Health Informatics as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sitting here with Megan Landry, uh, Program Manager for the Health Informatics Programs. Uh, Megan, do you think you would be able to tell the audience a little background about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Jeff. Um, like you can see on the slide, my background started as a um, nurse working in emergency departments and intensive care units. Um, while working clinically, I realized technology was either going to help us or hinder us. I tried to um, make it help us. Um, I really wanted to try to improve processes um, by learning more about computer systems, so went on to get a degree in health care administration with a concentration in informatics, um, because at the time, that's all that was available. Um, to me. I did some time working as both a clinical analyst and a clinical informatics manager, um, and the, all the while working as adjunct faculty um, through, through the years. Um, some of my personal areas of interest in the field are consumer and mobile informatics, along with health information exchanges, and always uh, the way we can use technology to improve patient outcomes and uh, experiences. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about our pro program mission statement. So the mission of the Masters of Science and in Health Informatics program is to prepare future leaders in health informatics to leverage technology tools to improve health and healthcare outcomes through the execution of data-driven management techniques and strategies, to adapt to rapidly changing landscapes, and to provide leadership and innovation to the health informatics profession. Probably the number one question that we get from folks is, what is health informatics? So uh, the definition we have here is um, the, interdis the interdisciplinary study of design, development, adoption, and application of IT-based innovations um, in healthcare services, delivery, management, and planning. Um, so that's kind of the formal definition. I like to give a couple examples of um, where, where these things, type, the types of work that folks do. I would say most commonly uh, these roles tend to be middle folks that work between technology companies, vendor companies, and uh, healthcare providers, whether they're physicians, nurses, uh, radiology staff, physician practices, and so forth. Um, other jobs in the field uh, could have something to do with uh, telemedicine, connecting remote sites with um, you know, seeing physicians on screens far away um, and, uh, and 
yet another field, kind of a subfield might be um, health data analytics, where we're analyzing data um, to improve health outcomes in communities. Um, another question that we get a lot is why get a graduate degree in health informatics? You know, what, what's that going to do for me? Um, and I can speak both from um, an educational and career perspective. Um, I think the first reason to do that is career advancement. Um, you know, you're, you're definitely going to move up the ladder with this type of degree. Um, whether you want to move up into leadership and management, that, that would kind of most typically be what people do um, with a master's degree but also move into a career that might, um, you know, meet their personal needs a little bit more. I know personally as a nurse, I enjoyed moving away from working um, holidays and every other weekends and night shifts to uh, a more relaxed schedule. Um, the other reason that folks um, enjoy this career would be the personal satisfaction of um, implementing products that really help healthcare providers. There's nothing more satisfying than um, working with a physician who is um, trying to learn to uh, document in an electronic health record system and really being able to teach them how to do it well, do it effectively, um, do it quickly, and to see that doctor really kind of connect with the system. Um, and then lastly, probably the other thing um, that would be remiss if we didn't mention is, is the salary increases. Um, typically, folks that move <clears throat> into these jobs do enjoy um, an increase in salaries. Um, and, and in some cases, uh, substantially. So the jobs are definitely in demand. The field of health informatics is growing 10 times faster than healthcare jobs overall and is the ninth largest share of healthcare job postings. Um, a lot of that has to do with the High Tech Act that was, you know, passed around 2008. There was a lot of money that was given out in meaningful use initiatives for the implementation of technology, uh, most specifically electronic health records. And so we've seen this boom in these jobs um, for those things. And also um, healthcare analytics jobs are very uh, big right now as well. Again, as I alluded to before, <clears throat> the increase in salary, um, we've, we have some studies here that say that um, some folks will earn as much as $20,000 more annually than those with only a bachelor's degree. And I know that anecdotally I, I saw that um, as a hiring manager as well. Um, so we you know, always like to say that we want folks to be part of the change. Um, this is a rapidly growing field um, and we, we, we were really interested in making healthcare more affordable through the use of technology and also to enhance the patient experience. Um, and patient safety outcomes. So with that, I'll hand it back to Jeff to talk a little bit about um, our program here. Yeah, so why pursue a degree with UNE Online? Um, our programs uh, for the master's and graduate certificates in health informatics are designed for the working professional. Uh, while our master's program can be, can be completed in uh, a little under two years, our graduate certificate be, can be completed in, in a little under one year. Uh, UNE Online runs off of an eight-week terms rather than your typical 16-week semester, uh, which allows you to work full-time and also uh, be able to concentrate on one course at a time. Uh, we offer six terms in one year, uh, which allows pro the programs to be completed at a faster rate as well. And we have three actual starts to the program, uh, one being in the spring, uh, one being in the summer, and one in the fall. Uh, the program is 100% online, uh, which means no campus visits and no mandatory time. You have to be, you know, right in front of the computer. Um, Kaylee will be going over the structure of the program uh, and how it's it's run weekly in a few more slides here. Uh, Holland, Wegner, and myself are the enrollment counselors for the health informatics programs. Um, our responsibility responsibilities as enrollment counselors start by answering any questions you may have about the program. Uh, we keep you up to date with what has arrived as well as what is missing from the application folder. Um, and one stigma that is associated with the application process is that when you actually apply with our online application that all your application materials are needed to be in, in at the same time. Uh, so that is incorrect. You can you definitely have the ability to 
to you know fill out the app online application and then be able to send in the materials as soon as you have them ready as, of course as long as it's before the application deadline uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, Haley Cantella is also sitting here with, with us. Uh, she is a student support specialist for these programs. Uh, Haley, could you tell the audience uh, a little about your role here with the program? Of course. Hi, everyone. This is Haley. Um, my role here at UNE is to essentially act as your main point of contact throughout your program. Um, so once you are matriculated in the program, my job is to guide and support you um, through the program all the way to graduation to ensure that you're on the right track to succeed. Um, some of the things that I can help with are registrations, um, setting up course plans and course sequences, textbook information and other general course requirements, um, changing any contact information with the university, and overall general course difficulties regarding Blackboard navigation and uh, different tools. Um, I can also assist with uh, contacting your instructors and just keeping up to date um, and a little bit about the way our courses are set up um, as Jeff mentioned we are in an eight-week course model and each of the week will cover a different topic that results in a specific learning outcome or goal um, essentially each week is made up of weekly discussion board posts that allow students to engage in conversation with each other as well as the instructors um, the courses are also comprised of different research projects, um, papers, mini papers, and um, other assignments that focus on the course learning outcomes. Um, in general, we do suggest that students dedicate approximately 15 to 20 hours a week for their schoolwork, um, and that also can vary uh, based on each course. So um, in general, my role is here, I'm here to support you. So if you ever do need assistance and you're not sure who to contact, that person would be me. Thanks, Haley. Um, so this is Megan again, and at this point I just wanted to kind of highlight <clears throat> some of the faculty that we have working in our program. Um, I've chosen two that I think represent the types of things that we're, we're um, excited about. The first one is, is Im Mr. Imran Khan, um, who is teaching the Introduction to Health Informatics class um, this coming summer. As you can see on the screen, he has um, a long list of expertise and I think uh, everybody would really be um, enjoy learning from him. Secondly, um, on the next screen, we have Dr. Pat Podiat. Um, Dr. Uh, Podiat taught for us um, uh, the beginning of this spring. We'll teach again this summer and has also been instrumental in developing the, both of those courses that you see on the screen and the healthcare quality one in particular. Uh, you can see from her background, uh, <clears throat> she has a lot of areas of knowledge, uh, especially risk management, compliance, quality, and how that all ties into uh, the global healthcare systems and um, health IT. So a little bit about our curriculum structure. Um, you know, we have the two programs, as you can see, the Masters of Science in Health Informatics. So that program is a 36 credit hour program. Um, and we also have the Graduate Certificate in Health Informatics, which, which is an 18-credit hour program. <clears throat> this is a list of, of some of the courses that we offer uh, that are required courses. Um, a few of the ones that I get the most excited about when I look at this list, um, they're all wonderful, but the Introduction to Health Informatics class is a really dynamic and interesting class. Um, that gives a deeper dive into the areas of health informatics, um, starting with um, you know, electronic health records, but also talking about how we exchange data that comes from those records, how we can engage with telehealth concepts, uh, mobile, mobile and ubiquitous computing um, concepts, and consumer um, informatics. Um, another class that I really like is the uh, information um, visualization class, H HIN uh, 715, that is where we take data that we can pull from these systems and we can visualize it so we can make some really interesting charts and graphs that show um, what's going on in healthcare systems 
sometimes in real time, and, and, and start using that data to impact um, changes in, in the healthcare systems. In the end, we do another class, 790, that looks at emerging opportunities in health informatics. And this is a look at, a look forward, what's going on. We'll talk about uh, Google Glass and wearables and how we can um, use consumer information. We'll talk about how all of that can be utilized um, internationally uh, to make impacts. Um, and then lastly, we do have a, a, a capstone project, a uh, master's project that will be kind of a cumulative project that will have a uh, field experience as well. So students will need to, you know, develop a problem, try to do some field experience with that, and then present a project at the end as a capstone project. Um, sorry about that. If we can go back to the electives, great. Um, so uh, I just wanted to take a minute and highlight those electives there because I think some of them are really um, exciting as well. We've made some changes and additions to um, the courses that we'll be offering as electives. Um, we'll be taking a look at um, uh, organizational behavior, workflow design, and change management. So in that class, we'll really be um, seeing how we can take technology and make it work um, in systems, in hospital systems, in um, physician practice systems, um, and really make that meet the needs of the people working with the systems um, along with the patients. So gone are the days where we just develop a piece of technology um, and we give it to uh, a nurse and say, learn to use this this way. We really want to move towards um, taking the nurse's workflow and building a, a piece of um, technology that will meet her needs and caring for the patient and always staying ahead of that. Um, another um, elective that's kind of interesting is global and public health informatics. This is a, a, a booming field as we end up with all, the, all of this data and look at um, the global perspectives and the challenges across the globe we can start using this data for um, some positive changes. So that's another one I'm particularly excited about. Um, so another thing that I wanted to mention about our courses is that all of our courses have been um, developed, designed with industry experts, um, subject matter experts in their areas of expertise. Um, you know, now this we did this recently. So these courses are not old, they're very new and relevant, um, and they're always being updated. Um, we never take courses from other departments and, and mash them together. We, we don't like to recycle courses. We built these courses as health informatics courses, not IT and health courses. Um, so we're really proud of that, and I think that really sets us apart um, as being both innovative and um, relevant. So um, on this slide, uh, we really wanted to point out some of the things that we're doing in the classes. This is an example of um, week one, the, the first week's work in a course that's running right now, actually, Introduction to Health Informatics. And what we're excited about is that students are given kind of a broad range of things to learn from. Not only do you have a classic textbook, but we're going to pull in um, all sorts of things, uh, articles, um, research articles, industry articles, white papers, um, you know, strategic plans. But then we also make it a little bit more interesting with some TED Talks and YouTube videos that I think uh, really can be very um, interesting and, and really, you know, bring a point home in a short amount of time. Um, this particular course, we've actually integrated a little bit of an infographic, which can be a really powerful way to communicate information very efficiently. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, looking at assignments, you know, how we assess your learning, uh, we try to make our assignments just as dynamic as our resources. Um, we try to make them varied so that um, you, you get a broad range of, of learning skills. We also try to make them real world. Um, some of the things that we have students doing would be discussion board posts where you're going to be discuss discussing a current topic with uh, your classmates. 
Uh, we definitely have some traditional papers, but then we have PowerPoints, video presentations, we have some audio presentations, um, we have you do voiceover PowerPoints, and then, um, you know, looking towards uh, very specific industry uh, tools, some executive summaries, we do um, some project management documents. Um, on, on this slide, you can see a couple examples of, of a mini paper. So giving you a pretty sp a very specific idea of, of the things that we're, we're looking at. And the bottom assignment is an infographic assignment, which I think is, is a lot of fun for students, especially those that like to show their creative side, <clears throat> and really forcing you to think about something and then put it into a very succinct and visual way of looking at information. So those are just a couple examples of, uh, of some of the assignments that we have built into our courses currently and that students are really um, growing to enjoy. Uh, next, I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about career opportunities. This is always a topic that comes up. Um, unfortunately, in this field, there isn't one, uh, you know, you can't go into a, a job site and type in one word like nurse or doctor and get a bunch of uh, hits. It's a, it's a bit of an ambiguous search, and uh, for that reason, we have a list of a lot of common words that you might see around this type of work. Um, some of those trends that you're going to see are words like informaticist. I would say analyst is another one you see very often. Um, clinical integration. Um, let's see, database administrator, consulting. Um, you're also going to see uh, things that have to do with telehealth, uh, data exchanges, information exchanges. So uh, lots of times people will say to us, well, what are the jobs? I don't find the jobs. And that's a lot because you can't type in the job health informatics. Um, and so you, you have to have a little bit of an understanding of, 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 these, of a slide like this to help you um, make your way through that. All right. Thanks, Megan. Um, a lot of information there, and I just want to remind everyone, if uh, you do have some questions, please use the chat function in the, uh, the, on the screen there, uh, and we'll address those questions uh, in a few minutes here. Uh, moving over to, to cost and financial aid. Um, as you can see, our program is $650 per credit uh, with a $75 technology fee per semester and a general service fee of $45 per semester. Uh, we do offer financial aid to those that may qualify, and we also have a great financial aid department that can go into detail with you about payment, different payment options. Uh, for more information, please take a look on our website at www.une.edu slash sfs slash online. So um, the program prereqs are pretty standard. Uh, we're looking for a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited U.S. college or university or its equivalent. Uh, if an applicant has earned their bachelor's or master's internationally, we ask that you get your degree evaluated from a third party for U.S. equivalency. Uh, we do accept students with different bachelor's degree concentrations and not necessarily looking for those with just an IT or healthcare background. Um, so we're also look, we also look at the past college GPAs. Uh, we are primarily looking for students to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher, but if you, you, you know, you may fall below that mark, uh, we'll look into the other materials a bit more closely, and uh, we may or may not reach out to your references. Um, so applicants must also have sufficient computer skills to be able to navigate the internet and effectively participate in the online program. And the final prereq is that you own or have regular access to a computer and an internet connection with the necessary software. So as for the application process, uh, we would need the following materials submitted um, before the application deadline for acceptance into the program. Uh, we'll have you submit an online application. Um, there's a usual $40 application fee um, associated with that, but, but with all the attendees tonight, uh, we'll absolutely uh, go ahead and waive that fee for you. Um, uh, you'll also need to request your official bachelor's degree transcript to be sent directly to us. Uh, we unfortunately cannot accept any copies of it. Uh, it has to come in a sealed envelope. 
Uh, we asked for a professional resume, a, also a goal statement from anywhere from uh, 500 to 1,000 words describing your experiences in the field, uh, particularly your experience in, pro in the program of interest, your capacities to succeed in a distance learning format, and uh, overall, you know, your professional goals for, for going through the program. Uh, the final piece to the application is uh, for you to give us uh, three names as references. Accompanying those names should be their relation to you, uh, the best email and phone number uh, so we can reach them. Uh, again, we, the reason we ask for this is that if for some reason there are questions surrounding your application materials, we can reach out to one, two, or all three of those references to help our admissions committee make that decision. So uh, we are actually nearing the end of the webinar. Um, we'll have some time for some questions. Um, so um, I guess we'll start off uh, here. There was a question. Let's see. Uh, that would be for you, Haley. Uh, can I complete a Master of Science in Health Informatics while working full time? OK. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so as I mentioned before, the time commitment that we suggest to students is approximately 15 to 20 hours a week to dedicate to um, coursework. Ultimately, our online programs at UNE are designed for the full-time employee in mind. Um, we do suggest that students take one course per session so that they're able to focus on the course content and not to um, overdo it with the amount of hours that they are dedicating. Uh, but really, in the end, time management is one of the most important um, factors of being an online student. So as long as you are setting aside that time for yourself to dedicate to school uh, and going by all of the appropriate due dates, you should be fine. All right, perfect. Uh, another question here, is the GRE required to apply? Um, the GRE is not required as part of the admissions process. If you've taken the GRE before, uh, you, you are definitely welcome to provide your score as part of your application package, but again, the GRE is not a requirement. Um, let's see. Uh, another one is, can I transfer previous course credits? Uh, yes. Upon acceptance, students may transfer up to three three credit uh, courses into the master's program, uh, so it's nine, nine credits overall, while we're able to accept two three credit courses into our grad certificate program. Um, so if you have any questions on how to do this, uh, please let let Holland and I know, um, you know, by calling us, giving, you know, shooting us an email, and we can get into further discussion on how that exactly works. Uh, let's see, Megan, you have a question over there? Yeah, and thanks for um, uh, sending these in. Keep them coming because we're going to stay on here for a few minutes um, until we get all the questions uh, answered. So bear with us. We might have to kind of pause and, and collect our thoughts. Um, but this question. Um, that I'm seeing here is what portion what portion I think of the program is statistics um, and we actually don't have a statistics class course in the program but we do um, strongly suggest that students have uh, taken a course in statistics prior to the, mas the master's degree um, and one research as well. Uh, the next question is, what software do you focus on? Um, by software, I am going to guess, and feel free to clarify in the chat, um, you mean what EHR software? Um, and I would say that we don't focus on a particular vendor. Uh, most often what happens is, is uh, employers will pay for you to uh, get training in a particular uh, software vendor, but we focus on the bigger concepts like um, how to develop software that works for um, physicians and nurses, how to make programs that um, are safe and efficient, uh, kind of some of those grander pictures than the specific softwares, software. <clears throat> and if I wasn't able to clearly um, answer your question, then feel free to, to um, you know, ask clarifying questions in the chat, and we'll 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 figure it out. So, all right. Another question we have: Are, are credits from the certificate program transferable to the masters? 
Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, if you uh, are kind of on the fence of, you know, choosing to get a master's degree rather than a grad certificate, um, you know, what you can actually do is you can start off, off in the uh, grad certificate program, and those, uh, those credits will definitely be transferable into the master's program. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so I have a question that says, what does the curriculum look like for the certificate versus the master's degree? And, and what I can do is actually kind of go through the list um, and tell you what, what those are. Okay. So the following six courses you have to take, whether you're in the certificate or the master's degree, uh, healthcare and public health landscape, Introduction to Health Informatics, Healthcare Quality, Computer Science for Healthcare Information Professionals, Database Design, Standards, Access, and Modeling, and finally, for the Certificate Program and the Master's, Health Information Legislation, Compliance, Privacy, and Security. Those are the six that you have to take for the certificate, um, to complete the certificate. For those taking the full degree, you take those six, plus the following um, courses, project management, um, information analysis, visualization, emerging opportunities in health informatics, and then the master's project, uh, which is going to be a, um, a field experience. And then two of the electives um, that we listed on one of the previous screens um, as well. So I hope that answers that question. All right, another question is, uh, is UNE accredited? Uh, yes, the University of New England is accredited by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. There's a question there. Um, okay, so the next question is, do the modules and classes have to be cons done consecutively? Um, Yes, they do. I'm just making sure I'm understanding it correctly. The classes need to be done in order. Um, when we get to the electives, you know, that, that part, there's a little bit of flexibility um, uh, in that area. But for the most part, they, they do need to be done consecutively. Um, another question. Yeah, uh, what is the application deadline for the summer? Uh, another great question. Uh, the application deadline, you know, we, we hope to have everything in uh, by April 4th. Um, and because the, the term actually starts up on May 4th. Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, another question here. It says, do we have job assistance? Um, and I'm guessing you mean job placement assistance. And... Um, we do have a career services department at UNE that can help students um, with job assistance, um, but otherwise, um, sometimes students speaking to the program manager just in general about the paths that they could take um, and what they're interested in can be beneficial um, towards the end of the program. Thanks, Haley. <laughs> um, so going back to a question, clarifying question about software, um, it says, data analyzing software. Um, we're working to, um, we aren't going to be highlighting anything specific right now, um, but we're working to try to integrate a, some modules where folks would be learning particular uh, software. It's still a little early for me to talk about those details, but our goal is for students to leave the program with a really strong understanding and skill set of how to use um, one or several different, um, uh, both software analyzing, um, pardon me, data analyzing software, but also data visualization software. Um, so uh, I, I guess I'll leave it as more to come on that. Um, uh, another question. Inf um, Is a thesis required, I believe, is the question that's being asked. Um, no, we will not have a thesis. We will have some type of capstone project 
Um, what that looks like for everybody will be a little different. Um, students will work with uh, faculty members to develop um, a project, a capstone project, and within that will also be some field experience um, process. And there will also be a presentation of the project, but it won't be a thesis uh, paper per se. I just wanted to add something to the uh, application uh, deadline for the summer. Um, you'll just have to um, actually fill out the online application by April 4th, but we'll give you, uh, obviously, to the end of that week in order to get the rest of those materials in. But if you're really um, seriously considering the summer term um, and you, you're, you know, you're definitely in uh, for the summer, what I would do would uh, definitely be to go and request your, your transcripts as soon as possible, because that tends to be the one um, material that holds things up. Um, so another question is, how many times a year do you enroll? Uh, we have three starts. Um, again, the, the spring, summer, and fall. Um, I mentioned we do have six um, terms throughout the year, but we only accept uh, students for the eight terms out of the, you know, the three terms out of the year. So the next question is, um, someone's asking for some example of capstone projects in the past. Um, so when I think about capstone projects, I think about students who are taking a problem they see in healthcare and trying to apply technology, technology or data to improve that problem. Um, again, it's, it kind of works differently for everybody where they are in their career uh, professionally and where they live, what they have access to. So um, I guess off the top of my head, I'm, I'm not thinking of any specific projects, but it'll be more of a um, iterative type um, ideas that you develop with your faculty members. All right. Uh, how many courses do you take at a time? Um, as I mentioned before, we work off of eight-week terms. So you're, you're required just to take uh, one course per eight weeks. You know, like I said before, uh, we work the schedule around uh, working professionals. So we understand that, you know, you have a large, a large part of your life that you're putting into your work. Um, so this all kind of allows you to um, concentrate on one course rather than numerous courses at the same time. All right, so that, I guess that wraps up uh, the webinar and the health informatics programs. Uh, thank you for attending, and please let uh, Holland or myself know if we can be of any assistance to you, you know, if, you, if questions come up tonight um, or tomorrow morning or next week, just definitely reach back out, and we, uh, we're definitely here to, to help you out through the process.